Just kidding. We're not restarting. Welcome everyone to our Esri live stream this morning and or this evening for you maybe. So I want to say welcome to everyone who's joining us as well as welcome to our folks who are viewing on demand. Thanks for checking us out. So today we're going to talk to Jim Barry with Esri. Uh, but before that, I'm going to do a quick run through on our um, on our overview of the Good Code Hackathon itself. And again, hey, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Stacy. I am a senior uh, senior program manager here at DocuSign. So welcome again. So two ways to win for this year's Good Code Hackathon. Um, so you can choose our good our Jane Goodall Institute Challenge, where you're going to integrate geospatial field data, data collection, and camera trap workflows for conserving chimpanzees and their uh, and their habitats for the Jane Goodall Institute. Also, where you're going to be utilizing Esri. And two, you can choose the Greater Good Challenge, where you can build an innovative web or mobile application that automates and connects agreement and e-signature and or e-signature processes for a nonprofit of your choice. A couple call outs here on this, uh, on the Greater Good Challenge. This must be a 501c3 or local equivalent uh, or nonprofit organization. We do check into that. And then also we've had some questions on Slack. Join Slack. Uh, we've had questions on our Slack channel that is uh, asking about whether or not they need to be um, authorized. You need to be authorized to be doing this uh, challenge, uh, et cetera, with the nonprofit. You do not. Um, you need to be familiar with it. We need to be able to see that you're familiar with it, but you do not need special permission from the nonprofit to do this. Um, just need to make sure that, again, that that is a registered 501c3 or your local equivalent to be eligible to win. All right, that's that. Then we're going to do a quick overview. We've got our over or about fifty thousand dollars in prizes to be awarded. Um, we've got our Jane Goodall Institute Challenge. First prize is fifteen thousand, and it is higher than our Greater Good because we want you to do that challenge. Um, also, special call out to our bonus prizes. Mainly, we're featuring. Hey, you get a twelve a twelve hundred dollar twelve fifty bump for best use of Esri or ArcGIS Survey 123. So pay close attention because Jim is going to tell you all you need to know. Speaking of, I'd like to welcome today Jim Barry, who is the Senior Solutions Engineer of Transportation Infrastructure at Esri. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for the intro. Of course. We're, we're happy to have you once again. Uh, you did such a great job. You know, we said, let's have him back. <laughs> so let's have you get to your presentation. Everybody wants to hear from you. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. And thanks for attending. Again, my name is Jim Barry. I work at Esri. I've been here actually 27 years, long time, uh, working with GIS. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, DocuSign and uh, the Jane Goodall Institute for inviting us to, uh, to help you and uh, get your ideas, bring your ideas to life and compete in this hackathon and, and do good stuff. We believe ArcGIS has the tools that can really help you, uh, especially when it comes to visualizing your data uh, and whether you're going to be doing that just with web maps or with our no code uh, customized applications, or if you are a developer with who want to dig into our APIs, whether they be for the web or native or Python, uh, we've got tools to help you. So for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to get you started with these ArcGIS tools on the web so that you can get your hands on uh, now and resources for you to get productive with them uh, quickly. Uh, what I've noticed at hackathons is people tend to use the technologies they already know. Uh, but if you don't already know ArcGIS, we figured this type of Kickstarter would be, help you uh, use the technology maybe you might be newer to, but you can still utilize. So if you have any questions or comments about what we're going to cover today, feel free to follow me on Twitter or shoot me an email and I'll do what I can to help. Uh, I've got a lot of information for you, so feel free to use these slides as a reference as you go forward. I've included a couple tiny uh, C, C URLs that will link you to the current version of the slides. Also, there's a video version of this if you want to review it uh, again. So we'll just go ahead and, and move on. Uh, I also have, if you don't have time to go through 30 minutes or go through a video, we have a cheat sheet, which has, which is kind of a text document of everything I'm going to cover in the next half hour or so. 
so that you can download that and it gives you all the links to everything you need uh, to know to get started. Some quick tutorials, some quick resources uh, for how to get going. So first about us, we are Esri. Uh, we were founded in 1969 and the world leader in geographic information systems technology, often called GIS. These are tools for managing spatial data, analyzing it in uh, using geospatial science, and also visualizing those results in various ways, uh, most often on, on a map. Uh, why do we do it? In short, everyone at Esri are true believers in what this technology can do and has done to improve our relationship with our world, uh, using resources efficiently, improving the lives of people by understanding our world, our impact on it. If you want, you can learn more about what Esri does and why we've been doing it for over 50 years uh, here at Esri.com. Uh, our president and founder, Jack Dangermond, has enjoyed a long, productive working relationship with Dr. Goodall. So it's extra special that we may be able to help you uh, make your good ideas uh, work as, as well. So first, what are we going to learn? We're going to learn what ArcGIS is, and then we're going to get you a free developer license and uh, some cloud credit voucher and put it all in your hands. Uh, next, uh, we're going to go through a walk through some basic skills. We're going to follow the data design develop pattern, how to get data in, how to make and style an effective map, how to use some analysis tools available on the cloud, and also then finally how to share your maps and, and, and tools with others with or without uh, code. Uh, first, what is ArcGIS? It's a, let's say it's a comprehensive set of apps and tools for managing analyzing and visualizing spatial data. But it's a lot more than just putting your dots on a map. You can model the world in 2D or in 3D. You can detect patterns to make effective decisions. You can see things that others can't. You can see patterns that you might not have seen otherwise. You can also use modern innovative technologies such as AR, VR. Uh, we have game engine SDKs for really advanced 3D visualization. We have artificial intelligence modules and deep learning modules for automating data collection and, uh, and such. We have, uh, support live streaming data so that you can see things moving around. And then we also have a wide variety of ways to get your maps and tools into the field using customizable apps, dashboards, story maps, to anywhere, anywhere, any, uh, anyone, anywhere, anytime on on any any device. Now, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here, but ArcGIS does offer heavy duty workstation GIS and enterprise class server software. But today, we're going to use the lighter weight, easier to use through the browser web GIS. Uh, where everything's running in the browser. We have a platform as a service and software as a service. Uh, systems. This diagram here in the upper right uh, pretty much sketches it out. Here at the bottom on the server or in the cloud is the spatial data you'll be mapping and the functional tools for working with it. Then here at the top are the wide variety of devices that you can push these maps and tools to. And then here in the middle is the, uh, is the portal tier that you can use to manage this content. You can manage security, manage your users and groups, and that way you can control who can access your content if you want. Um, so uh, let me see here. So this is a quick snapshot of some of the capabilities that you could bring into your apps and maps using ArcGIS. You may be familiar with things like uh, finding addresses and places or routing shortest paths or visualizing your maps in 2D and 3D. But ArcGIS also provides the ability to host your services in the cloud. Uh, and, and provides hundreds of thousands of useful data sets that you can bring into your maps and apps and include those as well. And then, of course, the special sauce of, uh, of GIS is spatial analysis and data science. And all of this is accessible through an engineered set of apps and tools designed to work together and make these capabilities as easy as possible uh, for you to, to access. So whether or not you consider yourself a developer, for our purposes today, developers.arcgis.com is going to be the website that you're going to use to access all this stuff. Now, while we have a full set of APIs for the web, for native development, REST, Python, we also have app builders and templates and open source projects that you can download and use for building pretty customized stuff, even without code. 
So you ready to go? Let's get signed up. So what we would have you do is go to developers.arcgiaz.com and create an account uh, either by with your email or you can authenticate using one of these other methods. And then we will activate your license and portal on the ArcGIS cloud so that you can use it for web hosting and cloud-based uh, geoprocessing. Then uh, what you're going to do after you've created that account with a verified email or that other method is you're going to log in. And if you click on your name in the pull down, there's a redeem voucher. If you click on that, you can use this cloud credit voucher code, which will give you extra credit for using more of our location services. And I'll, I'll, pull, that, I'll pull that voucher code uh, up again. Uh, there it is still if you want to grab it or take a picture of it. Uh, what you'll do is you click redeem voucher and then this page opens. You type in DocuSign star uh, hack 2022 redeem code. And then there you go. You get that. In addition to the cloud credit that we give you as a part of the free subscription, we give you extra cloud credit so that so that you don't you don't run out. So the key to getting started quickly, especially if you haven't used ArcGIS before, are these set of tutorials that you can run through in just a few minutes. So when you have your account and you're logged in on the front page of the ArcGIS developers website, click the learn and get started link as shown here. And this is what we uh, this is what will start now. While there's over 100 tutorials here, uh, most of them only take 10 to 15 minutes to do. You'll only really need to go through three or four of them in order to get productive. You need to get data into the system, get those layers onto your map and then figure out how to share that map uh, with others. And it only takes three or four of those tutorials uh, in order to get that going. Now, you can walk through the tutorial and do it yourself, or all of these tutorials also have a view in code pen link uh, that you can click so that you can see it's already done for you. You could just review it and, and get going. So if uh, if you're a code, if you are a coder, uh, you'll find a bunch of uh, tutorials to get you going first a hello world style sample to get it, an interactive map into your page and and then two or more uh, to show a couple of basic location services and like searching for an address or doing or doing routing uh, now so when i said data design develop so before you can develop an app you need to make a map and before you can make a map you need to figure out where that data is or how you can get your data into the system so searching for it is a great place to start and um, uh, it, you know, quite often the data will be yours, but you can also mix in thousands and thousands of data sets from, from others as well. So all across the web are open data portals and commercial data vendors that have lots of data you can use. So often finding it is as easy as doing a Google search. I tend to use keywords like GIS, map, data, download, followed by those keywords of what I'm looking for, like like bike lanes, tree surveys, water samples, weather data, you know, whatever I'm looking, what whatever I'm looking for. In addition, your ArcGIS license gives you access to an area that we call the Esri Living Atlas of the World, where you can search the whole globe for hundreds of thousands of useful, up-to-date data ready to use with your GIS. Another great source of data is the ArcGIS Hub website. Government agencies from all over the world use the ArcGIS Hub as an open data portal. Here, I searched for Get Food NYC distribution locations across New York City. These were established to help deal with the COVID-19 public health crisis and help people uh, show where these food distribution locations were. So once I find the data I'm looking for, you'll often find that this data is already published as a web service makes it easy to bring it into a web map as is. But then at some data portals, you'll see the data is just kind of in a downloadable file that you need to bring it down. Uh, but then with your developer account, you'll be able to then take that data, you download it and publish that as a web service to bring it into your web map uh, as, as, as well. So either way, you're good to go. In fact, this get food data set happens to already be published as a web service. So what I did is I grabbed this rest endpoint URI, which is just a URL, and copy that to my clipboard. Then in what my web map, I paste the URL in and boom, there's my layer of get food location points in my map. 
I can save it as my map. I can share it as my map. I can even click on a point in order to learn more about it. So I'd like to show you how you could do this yourself. So the number one tutorial that I always start people out with is called import data. Uh, so when the data you want to use is already as a web service, that's best. But like I said, sometimes the data you need is sitting on a FTP server somewhere, or disk somewhere, in case you need to download it first, then publish it as a web service. Um, so um, listed here are several of the most common data formats that you might find on data portals like that. And ArcGIS is ready to import any of these. Uh, some of them you may recognize like GeoJSON and Excel but some you might not like shapefiles, file databases. Uh, so you, you might run into those. Those are the most popular ones. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, the first tutorial is called Import Data as a Feature Layer. So back on the tutorials page, you find the one called Import Data as a Feature Layer. And here is the URL. If you can't find the link to it, here's the URL to that particular uh, tutorial that you're going to start with. And you'll find this 10 minute hands-on exercise and it walks you through finding a data set on a data portal, downloading it, and then publishing it as a web service to bring it into a web map. In fact, what I'm gonna do here on this video is I'm gonna run through that tutorial. You don't have to follow along. I'm just gonna run through it so that you see what it looks like so that when you do it hands-on yourself, yourself it'll, you'll be able to connect to some of those steps. So first, the tutorial says to log into your account and you're given a link to download the sample data sets. What you'll end up with is three data sets, a shape file of parks as polygons, a GeoJSON file of trails as polylines, and a CSV file of trail heads as points. That way you get to work with three different file formats, but you also get to work with three basic feature class types in a GIS, which are points, lines, and polygons. So before we get uh, too much further, um, just as a side note, uh, vector-based GIS starts with the premise that the entire world can be digitally modeled as points, lines, or polygons. And points can be things like light poles, fire hydrants, street signs. Polylines could be street center lines, streams and rivers, water pipes. And polygons could be like land parcels, building footprints, city boundaries. At that point, once we digitize the world this way, then the visualization and the spatial analysis that GIS provides is just math and geometry. It's just computational geometry. That's what gives GIS uh, the speed and accuracy. Okay, back on track. So from your dashboard on the layers tab is an import data button. And again, the steps are gonna run through. I'm gonna go fast, but your steps are gonna, you can go as fast or slow as you want. The tutorial asks you to drag and drop the parks shapefile onto this new layer page. Then you get to set some other properties of the layer. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and take the defaults. Then what happens is the shape file on your disk is uploaded into the Esri cloud and a web service is automatically created from it. We call this a hosted feature layer. There above is the uh, web service URL or the rest endpoint. Uh, as a shortcut, you can click to open your new layer in a 2D or 3D map. Or you can use this web service URL, just copy it to the clipboard and paste it in. And this is what it looks like. This web map starts with a base map layer of topography, but you could change that base map if you want. And then on top of that base map is this new layer of parks that you just published and imported. And each park is a blue polygon. Now, if you keep going with the tutorial, just a few more steps, it's also going to have you import the trails and then import the trailheads. So now all three imported layers are in the map. There's polygons, there's lines, and there's points. Now they don't look all that great, but next we're going to go into how to style the map to make it look better. Now, if you don't have the data you want to map, sometimes you need to go out to the field and collect that data yourself. We have mobile apps that you can run on a tablet or a smartphone that uses the GPS that's built right into the device to collect yourself or crowdsource the data that you want to map. They are Survey123 and Collector. And um, as was mentioned before, Survey123, we're going to have a little workshop on how to use that. So I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. You'll be seeing that. You'll be seeing that soon. So now that you have your layers downloaded, published, and in a map, let's let's make a better web map from it. 
So the next tutorial that we have you go through is to create a web map. It takes about 10 minutes to do, and it gives you the URLs and it just walks you through how to create that web map. So you uh, get that URL, add layer from web, paste it in, and then there's there's the layer in there, and then you can you can save that map. And uh, it'll give you four of those layers, and then you'll have a chance to kind of create that create that yourself. So once those layers are in the map, let's go ahead and style it so that it makes it a little bit more useful. So here's the third tutorial I'd like you to do. It gives you a step-by-step -step process for applying what we call attribute-based symbology. So basically, we want to change the colors and the shapes of the features based on attributes that data that are in the tables that are associated with them. Uh, you might have noticed that, that by default, each trailhead is a small circle, perhaps a green, maybe orange. Let me go back here. Uh, perhaps a green, maybe orange. But regardless, the tutorial shows you how to apply a more useful point marker. Uh, in this case, why not change each circle to a graphic that looks like a hiking sign? And now each trailhead point, which was a little orange dot before, is now a hiking marker. And that makes the, the trail a little bit, uh, that makes the map a little bit more intuitive. Next, uh, the tr tutorial has you apply some symbology to the line layer of trails. Now, each trail polyline is associated with a record. One of those values represents the number of feet of elevation gain there is along that line. Now, ArcGIS allows you to apply a rule so that trails that are very steep get a thick line and trails that are, that are kind of flat are a thin line. And that makes the map even more useful. So if I'm hiking or biking and I want to challenge myself or not challenge myself, just looking at the map, I can tell which are the trails, where the trailheads are, and which are the trails that are difficult, which ones are easy. Uh, let's next uh, apply a, um, let's, let's color code the parks by what kind of park it is. And that tu uh, tutorial walks you through as well. If I click on any of these features, I can learn more things about it. As you probably noticed, some of the information is kind of cryptic here. So we do give you the tools for making those labels a little bit more intuitive so that they're more readable by the general public. They make more sense. So now that you've brought your layers in, you've made your map, you've symbolized it, you've given it colors to make it intuitive, you've styled your pop-up, let's share your map with other people. All right, so um, when you're in the map viewer, there is a share button, looks like this, that you can use to control access to the map. By default, all your work is private, only you can see it, but you can define it, you can share it to individual people, to groups, or you can share it to the world. We make it easy to do that. There's some social media links. We make a short URL here for you. Um, and uh, let me see. And if you're creating your own web page, perhaps writing your own blog article, this will configure an iframe HTML tag for you that you can copy paste into your web page. And that will embed the map into the page, not a static map, but actually an interactive map that will now be in your web page. It looks, looks pretty slick. Um, there's also a button for wrapping a custom web application around your map. This is a no code option. It's a couple of dozen configurable web app, web app templates uh, that, that we provide that you can share your map as a web application. Uh, for example, Elevation Profile is one of those many templates that you can choose from. This seems appropriate to us since we're making a trail map. And then uh, here's what the configurable looks like app looks like when it wraps around my map. When I choose a trail, it makes a REST call to an Elevation Profile web service that converts that trail, that 2D trail, to a sideways elevation profile. So if I'm going to hike or bike on the trail, this is a really neat way for me to see the hills that are in my near feature. This is a very useful yet very simple web application. So ArcGIS also gives you a few other ways to create some really customized web apps, and uh, all of them without writing any code. Uh, this helps get your maps and tools out to your users very quickly. A web app builder and experience builder are widget-driven apps that run right in the browser. They walk you through building robust web apps, sometimes only takes a few minutes to create. Story maps are another great way to get your maps out, not only for relying on your end users to understand your map, but then when you can tell your own stories around the map, you can communicate that 
more effectively. Uh, dashboards are also another very popular way to create a web app that helps consume volumes of information in a very digestible, easily understandable way. Uh, you may have seen this, for example, here's a dashboard you may have seen recently, Johns Hopkins University used ArcGIS to visualize the volumes of public health data in an easily understandable way. At a glance, you can see the current state of things as well as trends over time. What you do is you bring your map into the dashboard, then you use this menu list of elements that you could drag in, resize, and connect data feeds and action triggers to. Uh, Web App Builder is another really cool widget driven in the browser lets you bring in your map, choose a theme, colors, and labels for your web page. You can then insert widgets so that your end users only have the tools that you want them uh, to have. Like in this case, um, uh, I gave them a, a measure tool, an edit tool. They can change the base map. I didn't give them a print tool, but I could have if I wanted to. It also gives you a preview to see uh, what your app and map are going to look like on a wide variety of devices. Um, the responsive web design is already built in, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Looks, these apps look really good on desktops, on tablets, even on even on smartphones. Excuse me. Now that's for web applications, but let's say you want to deploy an Android application or iOS application or Windows application. App Studio is like Web Map, but it works for uh, native native devices, uh, so you can use that. But what if you are, th those are all kinds of cool low code, no code options. But what if you are a developer? They always say, hey, where's the API? We have lots of API for the webs, for native, uh, for, um, we, and, and they all kind of wrap around this REST API. So regardless of what platform you're using, regardless of what language you're using, if you, for example, let's say you're a Ruby developer, we don't have a specific Ruby API, but you can always uh, go down into the REST APIs in order to, to make that stuff work. Uh, for example, we have a detailed documentation on the REST API. Uh, you can go right there, get started, services reference, um, all in general tutorials, all the way down to the, de the detailed um, documentation. Uh, for example, here's some of those basic uh, web services, uh, location services like routing and directions. And to call that, you just call the REST endpoint for it. You give it the right parameters and it returns to you uh, some JSON and some graphics here. So there is uh, my REST endpoint for the routing service. It says, hey, what point are you starting at? What point are you ending at? And then it sends off to the web service and the web service returns you some JSON. So not only can I construct the polyline on my map, but it also gives me turn by turn directions. So that's one of the cool things about using routing and directions. It gives you the graphic, but it also gives you turn by turn. And those are all accessible by the REST uh, um, API, uh, but also all of these other things, spatial analysis, elevation, geocoding are all um, ac accessible that way as well. If you're a web developer, we also have a REST.js open source application that you can bring in that makes the REST API even easier to use than it is already. Uh, and here's an example where um, I'm, I'm doing some JavaScript development. Uh, I bring in uh, the REST.js and I send some parameters. So I don't have to build that URL myself or build the JSON myself for a post request. I could just uh, work with these objects, set the parameters, call the method, and it does the same thing. It returns the same exact JSON, turn by turn directions, gives me the graphics I could draw it on my map. So you can always use the REST API if you want. But if you're a JavaScript developer, we have a JavaScript API just for you. And we have lots of tutorials that you can go through. They're 10 to 15 minutes each. We have a hello world. We have lots of other very basic things. If you if you code in native JavaScript, you're, you're good to go. If you use TypeScript, we have uh, we can help you on that as well. And we also support all of the popular web frameworks, uh, both the older ones like jQuery and, and Dojo, but also newer ones like Angular and, uh, and React and, and such. In fact, um, we have some open source projects. If you're an Angular or React developer, you can go out and download those to make our JavaScript API easier to use. If you have non-Dojo apps, you can always use this as reloader in order to, to load the API in. Uh, lots of sample code. Oh, um, there's like a couple of dozen tutorials, but if you go into the JavaScript area of the developer website, there are hundreds of sample codes. So, and we've been working on this API for a long, long time. So I think you'll find what I find at least, 
I'm hardly ever writing anything from scratch anymore. It's really a lot of times just an exercise in finding the sample that works as is or finding a sample that's close and just tweaking it or taking a couple samples and combining them together. Uh, works also in 3D. Uh, instead of a web view, you can also use a web scene where you can use all of the 3D visualization tools, but also the 3D analysis tools. Here's an example of a view shed. So if I'm in the river, I can see if I can see this window. If I'm in this window, what parts of the river can I see? What parts of the river can I not? Through a view shed analysis, which is pretty cool. So again, it's more than just visualizing your map. You do analysis uh, as well. Now, if you don't want to use our JavaScript API, if you're already, you already like using Leaflet, already like using open layers, already like using Mapbox, you can keep using it. You can use Mapbox with ArcGIS services on the back end and combine them together. Like for example, this is a Mapbox map. It is Mapbox tiles. It's a Mapbox pop-up, but the content within the, the pop-up is coming from an ArcGIS service. So our developer tools are actually really good. You don't have to use our stack. We work very well with lots of other third-party free and open source uh, tools so that you don't need to, to pay anything. And the way you do that is you're using that REST.js um, uh, API that I mentioned before. You create your own API key for ArcGIS services. You insert that API key. And then what that does is inside of your map box or leaflet or open layers map, it injects all of the ArcGIS stuff in there so that they can work together. Now, if you are a um, native developer uh, for uh, native devices like iOS, Android, Java, Qt, Windows, we have runtime SDKs that you can use. They're all built on a C++ core, uh, but we have SDKs that inject that stuff into any of these platforms for development. Uh, we also have exam. We have um, Tutorials, same kind of 15, 20 minute tutorials. These are in a little bit longer since we're dealing with a development environment of basic things. How to display a map, how to add a point line polygon, how to add a feature layer, how to display a web app, how to do some basic location services. We also have the example apps. Like for example, your iOS developer, we have these um, projects that you could bring into your Xcode development environment uh, that you can use as is or as a starting point uh, to get your application development going. Now, if you're a data scientist or you use Python, you want to do more advanced uh, statistics, we have a Python API. Again, get started, tutorials, tons and tons of sample notebooks, and a detailed API reference. A lot of our samples and a lot of our examples um, we uh, provide in Jupyter Notebooks. Obviously, you can also run those scripts in your own Python environment. You can run them standalone. Uh, but here's a tutorial that just kind of walks you through Jupyter Net Notebook for how to do that. And like I said, we have hundreds of other samples. And these Python, this Python API has been around so long that, uh, again, it's so often uh, you're not going to be writing things from scratch. It's really just going to be hunting around for something close. And if I was in a hackathon, I would really tool around within our samples to even just get ideas of things that you can do, things that you might not know uh, you can do, you know, analyze crime or track vehicles uh, or um, do or combine ArcGIS spatial analysis data science tools with other Python modules that bring you other capabilities. That's the beauty of Python. It's all modular based. You just pull it all together. And one of those pieces that you pull in is, is ArcGIS and, and it works with everything else. Uh, there's our Python API also wraps up artificial intelligence modules. Uh, like for example, um, as I said, at the beginning, I work in transportation here at Esri, mostly with railroads. So uh, I built um, an art, artificial intelligence, deep learning module that as trains pass by, you can count the number of trains. The the AI counts the number of trains, but it also identifies what kind of car it is. It knows I trained the deep learning model to say that this is a locomotive or this is a gondola or a flat car with shipping containers or what have you. And then so that automates the process of collecting that data and getting that stuff in, into the map. Um, and it took about 10 lines of Python code to train the data model, it took about 10 lines of Python code to do the predictions and create the data. And a lot of these scripts are already written. You don't have to know the gory underneath of how AI works. 
we've modularized that and abstracted that away from you pretty well. Um, we also have uh, online forums, uh, kind of like Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange. We have our, you can use those too. Uh, those are great. I use them all the time. Um, I don't know what I'd do without Stack Overflow. Uh, some, maybe <laughs> some of you agree. Um, but we also at Esri have our own online uh, community, our own online forums. Just pick an API or pick a, a product, uh, search what you're doing. And, you know, if you've run into a problem, I bet you so often someone else has run into that same problem before. They probably asked the question. It's probably been answered by lots of people. And the best answers are voted on and bubble to the top. So this is a wonderful resource when you're running into things like error messages or things aren't working right. And, you know, if it, it's just if something doesn't work right for you, un, you know, intuitively, it's probably not worked for someone else. And we probably already solved the problem. So and then if if you can't find your answer here, just post a new question. I'm constantly amazed by how many people out in the world will just jump in and answer, spend time answering and helping. Some people just really love to help. I don't know where they get the time from. In fact, a funny joke, I had someone tell me uh, a couple of years ago that they actually created two accounts. They they post the question with one account and then the second account, they answer it wrong, but they're really smug about it. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> what'll happen is everyone else in the community will just jump on this person about how wrong they are. And if you sift through that, you might find the right answer. I'm not recommending you do that, but I've seen that work. Um, and it's it's kind of funny. It's just human nature, I guess. But but the, the, this, this forums are, are really, really popular. And I bet you'll find a lot of answers out there. And you might find some ideas out there as well as you're you know, using the JavaScript API, just scroll and you might say, hey, I didn't think you could do that. Oh, I can use that for what I want to do. So a lot of great ideas out there. Uh, more great ideas. We have hundreds of repos on Esri's GitHub site. It's not just apps, but also libraries and um, and samples and, and data and tools and uh, documentation and stuff that we publish on our open source site. Um, and you can contribute to these open source projects as well, but let's be honest, most people don't contribute. Just find what you like, download it, use it. We also have an issues tab. So if you have questions or concerns or wanna see something, you can post an issue. And all of the folks that contribute to each one of these repos will reply there. So it's almost like, a Q and A board uh, as well, uh, but you're but it's specifically about that tool, and you're talking specifically to those contributors that that work uh, that work on that stuff. Um, again, so uh, there's the information. Oh, uh, let me go all the way back to the code. Some of you might not have gotten it. Um, this is the voucher code. So um, sorry about this. So you're going, again, you're going to developers.rgs.com. You're signing up for an account, either by email, filling out this form, or using one of these social media accounts. And then once you get in there, sign in, redeem voucher, redeem this voucher as is, and you'll get more cloud credit. And here also, if you want to take a picture of it, is the, uh, the link to these slides. And a link to a video version of what I just did today, in case you want to zoom forward and backward. Uh, I think it's on YouTube somewhere as well. But but anyway, here. so here's the URLs uh, so that you can find the, if you get tripped up finding these tutorials, I, I included the direct URLs to them. Also, please, please download this cheat sheet. It has everything on it. It's got all the links on it to all the tutorials and uh grab that and then i'm um, also follow me on twitter there's my email address as you go through if you have any specific questions please contact me and i think how are we doing on time it looks like we got about five minutes um i'm ready to open it up to, to questions if you want to take it over uh amy or um hey it's stacy i'm back <laughs> let me get my screen you can't get here. rid of me yeah. Yeah, Amy or Stacy. Yeah, I know you were lurking in the background. So <laughs> always lurking. Um, so we did have one question that came through. How do we add in the cloud code voucher? You did just go through that a little bit, but would you mind going through that again? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Now it's really important 
that you sign up for the account at this website, the developers.arcgs.com website. There is also, just because we like to make things confusing, we also do have a website called arcgis.com. And if you sign up for an account there, that's not a developer account and the voucher code won't work. So back out of that, go to the developers.arcgs.com website, sign up for an account that way, this way. And once you, and, and uh, you know, you just fill out the form or use one of these accounts. And, a, and after you're done signing up, you will be logged in here. And when you click on your name on the login screen, you will see this label that says redeem voucher. When you click on that label, it'll bring you to this page where you paste in that code. And when you click the purple redeem code button, uh, you already have an account, but we will then add more cloud credit to your account. Does that help? And if you missed those steps, um, it is on the cheat sheet, what I just said. And um, it is, uh, those steps are also on the, uh, the slides URL here. The only thing that's not on the slides or the cheat sheet is the code itself for your particular event, which is DocuSign Star Hack 2022. Great. And we've dropped that uh, code also in the chat. So please look there. And as well, we will take those uh, links. Thank you, Jim, for those, uh, the links to the slides, and we will make sure those get added to our Slack. Uh, so this is an additional pitch to join our Slack. So thank you, Jim, very much. And I'm going to uh, pop up some of our, uh, our, uh, resources and links, all that fun stuff that you need um, to participate in our hackathon. We will make sure to drop in those links also into Slack. I keep saying it, join our Slack channel. You're going to want to use actually click on that link. We will provide that um, as well in the chat from, or excuse me, in the comments um, on YouTube. Um, so you will be able to get those. So these uh, will be shared also on demand on YouTube um, and look to there for our link to Slack. And thank you for my lovely assistants who are also uh, dropping that join link in chat. Oh, we do have another question that just came in. This is a little bit of a long one for you, Jim. Hang on. So uh, Samina has a question about survey one, two, three. How do we create a form there if we aren't an existing customer. Uh, it seems like we need to have a subscription to create a form. Um, yes, once you create the developer account, like I walked through, uh, you will then have access to survey one, two, three to, be, to create a form. Great. Thank so you. what what you'll end up doing is, and, and they'll go, they'll cover this in the workshop. Is it tomorrow? I think you said Thursday at 9.00 AM Thursday. Yeah. So, um, what I'll do so that you don't have to wait till Thursday is I'll get a I'll um, I'll get with Amy to get a, a link to a tutorial there. So uh, what you end up doing is you create the developer account, uh, you create um, a, a map and a layer, uh, and then what you could do is you can create a survey one two three form uh, that refers back to that layer for editing it, or you can create a survey one two three that's standalone. But once you have a, a, a developer account login, then you, while well, you said you're not a customer, you actually are then an Esri user uh, slash customer and you can use Survey123. And I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get a, a, a tutorial for Survey123, kind of a hello world getting started with that. And I'll get that somehow into the, uh, the Slack. Great. Thanks, Jim. Sure. All right. Uh, last chance for questions if you have any. Give it a sec here. All right, looks like we do not have any other questions. So um, I am dropping a link for a, a Survey123 uh, reference doc as well provided uh, by Amy with Esri. Thank you, Amy. So uh, Thanks, Amy. otherwise, looks like we don't have any other questions. Uh, Samira is saying thank you very much, uh, Aparvada. 
also said thank you for answering their question as well. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone uh, for joining. I'm going to call out, especially we've got two more live sessions this week. We've got one tomorrow at 1030 a.m. Pacific time. It's DocuSign eSign 101, and we will go through OAuth as well. So please join for that. Uh, and then as well on July 21st, as we said, 9 a.m. ArcGIS Survey 123 Overview. So please make sure to join us for both of those. Otherwise, thank you again, Jim, for joining, and we will see everyone next time. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Good luck, everyone. Thanks. Bye.